But now we're back here at Bossier City Civic Center in Bossier City, Louisiana for the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown. And we're ready to go, so let's get to PJ. All right, our, la our next division for this evening is the Women's Pro Division. Our fifth place qualifier with a score of 390 from Red House, West Virginia, shooting for Matthews, Laney Smith. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 393 from Marsden, Saskatchewan, shooting for Hoyt, Aaron McLattery. made <laughs> we have it there we go all right she brought down the house good for you Aaron <laughs> all right our third place qualifier with a score of 398 from Lapeer Michigan shooting for Matthews Cara Kelly and our second place qualifier with a score of 400 from Townville, South Carolina, shooting for PSE, Sharon Wallace. And our number one qualifier with a score of 402 from Dublin, Georgia, shooting for Matthews, Kaylee Pettifer. Okay, so here we go. We uh, During the break, they reset the targets. So now for Steve Anderson and I, we don't know the distances that they're going to be shooting here. I mean, we can take a look down the range and we can kind of give you an idea of what's the furthest one. But of course, target number one is going to be the Stan Hyena. The Elevation Impala will be our second target. The Shibuya Javelina is our middle target. Gold Tip Mule Deer and the Bowdoodle Grazing Doe. And this yeah. is, what do you think, Steve? It's quite a bit of a change. Yeah, it is. Off. So f second target and the third target, the Havelina, sorry, yeah, the Impala and the Havelina, those are the two furthest ones now. That mule deer, which was the longest poke at 48 yards, has moved in quite a bit. It's a good 14 opportunity. And then our grazing doe has flipped around and is our second shortest target. We've got a bunch of umbrellas out for reasons I'm unsure of, but so I guess this is lighting. It is lighting. It has to do with actually the screen that's offset to the right. Is that yeah, for some right. people when we when they show cer certain shots, it's been causing some reflections. Yeah, it didn't seem to be a problem for uh, Kyle Douglas. <laughs> no. But yeah, they're, th they're throwing the umbrellas out and they're, s they're still missing left, which has been common. That was what we saw uh, early on. Okay, first up. All right, so we'll go to Pettifer, who's on the Stan Hyena. Looked like she did not call upper, so that's going to score a. Mm. Okay. Mm. Perhaps she moved the cone back? I don't know. So then we move to the elevation Impala. Sharon Wallace with a 10. We're going to have Cara Kelly and the Shibuya Havelina. I think that's some information, Steve, coming from some of the other lines about the big screen that we have here for the crowd offset to the right. And so it's probably more just in yeah, case ish. You could, you could see it actually off of uh, some of the shots on shooters, the, the tight camera shots. You could see the light bouncing off their riser off the paint. You could see it on the cable guard bar. I did notice that. Uh, if you go back through and look at some of those, you'll see it. But yeah, I, um, you know, they fight this a little bit with spectators. You're, you're always on the line of is this a spectator sport or a competitor sport? And, you know, a lot of people are going to, there's going to be a lot of comments about. 
banishing umbrellas <laughs> in the shoot down. Certainly banishing umbrellas in indoor use. Isn't there a thing about bad luck if you open an umbrella indoors or? Yeah, isn't? Yeah, I think so. Something about yeah, that. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So. Oh, <laughs> for Lady Smith, that was a bit of a surprise shot. Her first ASA shoot off. 2022 Rookie of the Year. Third year as a pro for Smith, who rotates now from the target, the fifth target, the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe, will walk all the way around to our yeah. first position target, the Stan Hyena. I did notice that Kaylee Pettifer's cone was outside, so uh, we were questioning on that one, but yeah, she had it moved out away, calling for upper 12, got the upper 12, and uh, heading into round two here. She's carrying a four-point lead over Sharon Wallace. Sharon's got two points on Cara Kelly. Cara sitting five points ahead of Erin McGlattery, and then uh, Laney's eight points back of her. Pettifer is on that elevation Impala, which looks to us probably the second furthest target we have downrange. I believe so. Yeah, I think the Javelina is our class leader. Um, that's a tough one to be shooting at at that, you know, 50-ish yard number that it's probably sitting at. Sharon Wallace looked like she was in with a 10 on that Shiboya Javelina. Laney looks decently stable there. She shot, she hit an upper 12, but she did not call upper, so... She's probably about two yards hot on the distance that she judged it for. All right, first up, Laney. Ten for Laney. Right. Good shooting for Laney Smith. And a ten. So Kaylee Pettifer, your leader coming in. And already in with seven bonus rings. Sharon Wallace came in to this pro pressure point shoot down with the most bonus rings of seven, even though came in at an even par 400 for Wallace. Now we move over to the Shaboya Javelina. And that, to me, being as far as that one is and having to judge in this very interesting environment with nothing really to judge off of, that's a really solid shot. Yeah, these first few targets are going to be key. Usually they, they do get a period of time where they get to come judge this and they take some notes. They will adjust the rest of their targets after, you know, based on how they shot these first couple. If they can get good feedback on what their shot was, they can get a good idea of how accurate their initial judgment was. <laughs> and then uh, they can adjust from there on the rest of the targets. So the reaction from Cara Kelly where that arrow was just outside, just outside that lower 12 ring. Yeah, and there's a little intersection there that they've determined scores a 12 if you can catch it. She was hoping she was getting over into that, but was not there. Scored a 10. Basically, those 12 rings are they're rings, but they have kind of a parallel section at the end of them. So uh, we'd have to highlight it on a computer graphic or something like that to really show how that 12 ring scores. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can do that in a future episode. Yeah, yeah, it might be something to build on right there. There you go. Aaron McLattery. Glass and down range. She won Metropolis last year, did McLattery. Six years as a pro. Super important to know that she is from Canada. And that's important why, Steve? Uh, well, they let her across the border, and, um, <laughs> yeah, she spends a lot of time here shooting archery. But uh, Very talented shooter, too. Yep. Yep, she's from, I think it's uh, Medicine Hat, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan there. Saskatchewan? Marsden. Oh, I was way off. Yeah, Marsden. But, uh, that's near Saskatoon, though. Uncle I know Steve is not from Marsden. No, my friend Uncle Steve, who has a Russian boar in the backyard, is from Ohio. If, if that was called lower, that's a 12. From Pedro. Get on pace here. On that poke. There's Cara Kelly. She's won about a thousand of these events. Yep. She went after. She's just right again. So she missed that last one just right, and this one's going to be just right. But, yeah, Cara Kelly looking to make a move on, on Sharon, who we're seeing at full draw here. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Yep, Sharon solid 10. All right, first up. All right let's see how this one plays out. 
to the stand, Hyena. We go, and this is Aaron McLattery. And that is just an unreal 14. Very nice shot from Aaron. That's a tough one to go at. Quite possibly, too, that Hyena is, I would say, the third furthest away. It is. And Aaron right there is looking ahead, right? So we've got five targets they shoot out here plus a sixth bonus target if you're within 10 points of the leader. Right there, she, she came into this round three, 11 points back of our leader. So she's trying to make a move up, get herself well inside that 10 points so that she can gun after a sixth target and try to get herself a shot at this podium here. Kaylee with a lower 12, but she called upper, so she's going to get a 10 there. So the important thing, that you'll notice the shooters have cones in front of them if we get a wide pan shot of them. But uh, the shooters have cones. If they keep it behind the, the sign on their target number, it indicates they're going to shoot at a lower 12. If they move it outside where it's visible to the downrange scores, that indicates they're shooting for the upper 12. So uh, Kaylee called for upper 12, hit the lower 12. She only gets 10 points for that. And Wallace well inside that 10 ring. Now we go to Cara Kelly. Important note about Sharon Wallace is that she's from Townville, South Carolina. I really like that. When they named that, they were like, what are we going to call this town or village? <laughs> I don't know. How about Town Village? That's a good point. All right, so after three arrows in our five competitors, we've seen only two bonus rings to this point. I say only two. It's judging this distance and, and having this – Oh, this very is challenging. Bright. Yeah, very it challenging. is very, very challenging. Yeah. Tens are good. Tens, Tens are, are yeah. good here. I mean, we look at the, the scores coming in. Only two of them were above even, which is 400. It means they averaged 10 points, um, that being Kaylee and Sharon. So, you know, we, we watched Sharon last week shoot a 20-up day. You know, yeah, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. I say last week. I, I mean the last event, last round event. two there uh, at Fort Moore. But, yeah, Sharon now trying to make a move on – Kaylee sitting four points back. Cara two pack of Sharon. And then Aaron made a good, or sorry, yeah, Sharon. Aaron made a good run there uh, to try to put some pressure on Cara and stay within 10 points of Kaylee. Cara Kelly, the first up that was we're looking at the stand hyena. That'll be a 10. So four tens in a row for Cara Kelly. Then we go Aaron McGlattery, who just shot a 14. She's gone 10, 10, 14 for the Canadian. It's a really good start for uh, Aaron from Saskatchewan. There's a good upper 12, too. Really good shoot off going for Aaron here. So two bonus rings worth six extra points so far for McGlattery. That's a five in the leg. Oh, that was Laney Smith. She's still having a good time letting Mike know. Yeah. Yep, she's out here in her first shoot off, getting a lot of really valuable experience for the ones that she's sure to make here in the future too. For Laney Smith. Her dad, Ken, and her mom, Bonnie, in attendance as well. I'm sure they're smiling huge. I noticed she lists them as additional sponsors, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us had that sponsorship coming through. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I would be without the old sponsorship from mom and dad. Anderson 12. Custom Application. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're into the fifth and final arrow of regulation in the pro pressure point shoot down women's pro category, the unknown distance. So no range finders. These shooters have got to figure out the distance, have confidence in that mark. Oftentimes we hear people that shoot unknown, Steve, will be like, all right, I think it's X, and then I'm going to add two yards. Yeah, yeah, they do some of that for different targets and how they tend to trend on those targets. So... Now we're moving into that fifth and final-ish arrow, and we've got Kaylee, 444. Sharon Wallace, two points back of her. Aaron McGlattery trailing Sharon by three. 
Cara Kelly one point back of Aaron and Laney Smith uh, having a good time. Going to give it one more go. And this this arrow is going to be real pivotal as if, as every arrow is. But you know, jock in for position as we go into that last chance archery, last chance arrow that we're going to get for everyone who stays within 10 points of our leader. There we go. Oh, did Looks she like it? she got that 14. Dude, that would be a crowd favorite if she actually yep. got that one. I think she got it. That's the one to shoot at. I could be wrong, but we'll get a better look at it here from our scorers. Stan Hyena and Sharon Wallace. Sharon shot at the lower, so she's going to get a 10. Yep. Still. Four tens and a 12 for Wallace. Yep, so she's going to be at 452. Then we'll move to the elevation Impala. That's going to be Cara Kelly. Cara's got that lower 12. She's been right on all of them. That one, she just got a piece of it. Sure did. So Cara's going to move to 450. That's a really clutch 12 for her. Good shot by Cara. A couple of clicks to the site might help. Aaron McLattery shoots one wide for an eight. Oh, after all that work done yeah. with a 14 and a 12 and moved herself into third place. So, yeah, that shot from Cara Kelly. That was huge. That four yep. points difference should put her three points yep. ahead she's, for third place. She's got a 450, and Aaron sits at 447. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, this is Laney Smith's arrow oh. for a 14. <laughs> it's a really nondescript 14 ring right there. It's hard to see. Uh, I don't think it's going to get it, but it's a really great effort at it. Yeah. And it's good to go out and shoot at one in your uh, in your debut there. All right, so the score is in, and it is an eight. Just a bit outside, yep. but what a performance for Laney Smith in her first shoot down, and the crowd loves it too. What a smile. Hopefully we'll see Laney Smith back here many more times. Kaylee Pettifer with a 10. All right, so this is what we're faced with, Steve, as we update the scores here in a moment. Anybody, as you mentioned, within 10 points is going to get a chance to shoot the last chance archery, last chance arrow. It's a lot of last chances coming at you. Yeah, it's my fault. That's a long story. <laughs> There's the updated scores. So Aaron's going to be our first shooter. They're going to get a couple of minutes here to judge this incredible Russian boar that we're naming the Uncle Steve boar. Yeah. We'll see where they put it here. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a poke. Yep, it's going in the back corner. And let's see where they stick the archers here. So Aaron's going to be our first shooter. Uh, she's going to have to shoot at... She's going to have to shoot at a 14. I mean, that's really her only option if she's yeah. trying to put it on the podium. She's going to have to shoot at a 14 to try to uh, get that edge on Kara. And then, you know, we'll see what happens from there. But if she can put one in, that'll put her at 461. And uh, that gives her a chance at, you know, maybe even second place if, if the others don't come through. Would you ever have a favorite arrow? Like a shoot-off arrow that you had? No. I try not to be superstitious about that. I mean, mm. you know, I primarily shot target archery where you're pulling six arrows at a whack. And, you know, yeah, you're going to cull some ones that you're not real confident in, but I'm going to have a rack of first-teamers mm -hmm. that I can pull from. I'm not going to look at it and read a number or anything like that. I'm just going to pull the arrow out and shoot it. But, yeah, the key component there is having good arrows. So, <laughs> All right. Now that was our official doing the range finding because we do have a maximum distance limit of 50 plus or my uh, plus three percent. So I guess really you'd say 41 and a half. 51 and a half. F yeah. Sorry, 51, and, 51, and, a half, 51 yeah, and a half. So I want to make sure it's within that distance. All right, now Scott. Scott knows it. We got the target that's been given. No one away. else does. But you're going to shoot it anyway. All right, we'll start your one minute now. Interesting here is I'm watching him judge this target and. If you look, Kaylee's about a quarter yard in front of Sharon. You know, they're they're all at a little bit different spot. So um, when they shot this, they're in those boxes that you see on screen behind the target, behind the shooter. So you could move a yard forward 
or backward just in that box almost. So it's real key that you're trying to keep some consistency when you go from this initial judgment standpoint to going behind the, the cone. You know, try not to move forward a foot and a half and change it by a half yard. Mm -hmm. These girls are good enough to judge to a half yard, too. So they will call that. See, now Cara's position where she's judging from right now is about a half yard difference than what she was judging the first go around. The other thing, too, is as you look on screen, you can clearly see the scoring rings. That's not necessarily the no. case from when you're actually standing as many yards back as they are. Yep. I mean, they have younger eyes than I do, but the clock just went off. So that should be the end of judging. Yep. I'm going to guess this target's in the mid-40s, above 45. I don't want to say that too loud, but <laughs> I'm uh, not the one that they would want to take advice from anyways. But yeah, especially from the position we're yeah, sitting in, which is off to the side. Yeah. So I'm looking at this going, all right, it's, a, it's enough of a poke that what I'm getting at is, as you mentioned, you can't really see those rings. And that target from where you and I are sitting, and we are closer than the archers, that target is uh, somewhere between a bulldog and uh, – <laughs> Domestic farm pig, so you can't really tell what it is in this lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely not a chance to pick out scoring rings. I can see, like, the definition of the back leg, yeah, that's about it. You can see a tusk. 14 from Gladdery. See what she can get here. She lets down. Yeah, she was waving it around a little bit. It's a good letdown. Start over. Six Got plenty of time on the clock. Yeah, 60-second shot clock. She still has 35 to go. Yeah, these shooters are going to take about 12 to 13 seconds to execute an average shot. So you got plenty of time. Last chance archery, last chance arrow, Russian boar, and she went for it. Did she had the distance, she just went wide. Yeah, what a what a judging distance. That was outstanding, just a bit to the right. She had to go for it. Yeah, she had to go for it, so she's going to finish uh, in all likelihood in fourth place. Really good shoot-down effort by Aaron. Just a couple of targets got away from her. And, you know, she came off the 40-euro qualifier, Steve, with five bonus rings and was able to get two here in the finals. Yeah. And that's percentage-wise impressive. <laughs> yeah, and she got some clutch ones, that big 14 there, mm -hmm. on a very difficult hyena. So Kara is now looking at... She doesn't have to worry about what Aaron did, right? So now she's moving in and going, okay, I'm going to be on the attack mode against Sharon. If Kara aims at a 14 and shoots a 5, she still beats Aaron. She still takes third place. Uh, great position to be in. I think she's going to gun for She's gonna gun for a 14. If she can get a 14 and Kaylee shoots a 10, they're tied for the lead. Right, because if she so. even hits foam that she yeah. equals Aaron McLattery, then she Correct. gets third by three points. Yep. She lets down as well. 40 seconds on the clock. Again, plenty of time. I would actually take a little bit more of a breather right here. One of the things I like to do is actually set the bow on the ground, get the weight of the bow off my hands, let my shoulders relax a little bit, and then restart my shot process. Gets a little bit of that lactic acid buildup out. Here goes Kara, gunning for a 14. She shot at a 12. Wow. Huh. So she went for a 12, shot a 10. It's an interesting play. Okay. So she's going to be at 60. 460. Maybe her play here was more aimed at jumping into second place. You know, if Sharon was thinking about shooting a 14. Mm -hmm. point lead over Sharon. Because the way Pettifer's been shooting, you have to kind of say, okay, even at this distance, center mass 10 is probably. Yeah, she's probably going to be able to get a 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looked like Cara had the distance. Right, well, I didn't see if she called upper or lower. Sharon has called upper. Sharon's called upper. She's going to aim at an upper 12, I do believe. <laughs> yeah. Um, Again, the target we're shooting at is a Russian boar, not on screen right now. Yeah, it's just behind that 
upper left graphic. Yep, and it's uh, a good bit of a poke right. further than All that right. mule deer you could see. Probably in the mid 40s for range, maybe about maybe maybe mid to low. Here goes Sharon, big winner last time at round two. Went for the upper 12. I think she's drifting. No, yeah, just, just off of it. Drifted just right. Good She's distance. Got a 10. Moves her to 462. This means Kaylee. Kaylee's. Oh, I don't have a bonus ring count, but. Yeah, I do. So basically, Pettifer came in with six bonus rings. Sharon Wallace was seven, and they each shot one. So Kaylee needs a 10 here. You are eight points behind. Yeah, but she needs a 10, and 8 would ring. tie, yep. and Sharon would win on bonus rings. Yep, for those unaware, first tiebreaker is a total bonus rings. Sharon has one more bonus ring and than Kaylee, so Kaylee needs to beat her on start. outright score. She Thank needs you. a 10 to win. Kaylee, are you ready? All right, we'll start your one minute now. The way I shoot, I would definitely call up her, <laughs> just because generally, you know, if it drifts down, Sure. If you hit it, you hit it, but you're looking for center mass 10. And that is an 8 for sure. Okay, Sharon Walsh is your winner. She knows it too. She knows it. Jack Walsh is in the back. He's ready to high five. Your champion, Sharon Wallace. So Sharon Wallace ends up your champion on one single bonus ring and tied score. And at that distance and unknown, that 10 was definitely not a given. If anybody could hit it, it would be Pettifer, but unfortunately just a little high. And Sharon Wallace coming off of the qualification ranges. Ends up landing here two points back, but one extra bonus ring. And when she looks at her fourth arrow that she was able to shoot here in the pro pressure point shoot down, it was that one bonus ring that allowed her to win outright and not have to go into a single arrow closest to the center shoot off. Back to back wins. Well, Sharon. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. I know you're full of emotions right now, but try to sum it up for us. How are you feeling? Um. You know, it's you shoot against these girls, and you love them to death, and you always want to see everyone sh shoot really well. So it was very hard not to cry to see that happen when you're also happy to win, but when you see a good friend shoot great all weekend and then something like that. I've had that happen to me before, and it's just gut-wrenching. Um, but I, I really am a loss for words right now. I really am. But it was great shooting. You had seven bonus rings on the field, and then you came in here and were able to hit your fourth arrow with another bonus ring, and that one bonus ring got you the win. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, another one for Sharon Wallace as she enjoys the day and figures out the emotions on this one. That'll do it for the women's pro category. Wow, what a finals we saw. Kaylee Pettifer, we thought she had the clutch. Sharon Wallace ends up with the big win. We have one more coming at you. The Open Pro category, the biggest names in the sport. On the other side of this commercial break, 